Failing plans for back to school. It's leaving many parents with a tough choice to send them to school or to keep them home. For some, making those choices without guilt is easier said than done. That's what John Shumway is looking into this morning. John, we were talking about this a little bit yesterday morning with just those initial decisions being thrown at parents and right. hey, now you have to choose. Yeah, and I think it's fair to say we are facing questions in this COVID environment that we have never had to face before. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. After months of the schools being closed and having the kids at home and underfoot and in your hair, who can blame any parent for looking for the relief of the school year? Only this year, that relief comes with the potential of illnesses like never before. COVID-19 has changed the dynamic and is forcing parents to decide whose interests are most important. James Shamlin from the Cranberry Psychological Center says the positives of child development in a school setting are well documented, but it's our DNA to protect our kids from knowingly putting them at risk and do otherwise saddles us with a heavy dose of guilt. For parents today to uh, offer their children to go to school, uh, you know, it's really important that they see beyond that guilt of that fear that I may be putting my child in harm's way and instead looking at the other positive possibilities that uh, are present in their children going back to school. But I can see a parent looking at this and saying, it's a lot more convenient for me to send my child to school, but if they come home sick, I am going to feel awful. So one of the important things is, I think, for parents to have some reassurance is to really tap into uh, the administrators and the teachers at school as to what they're doing to help uh, teach children to maintain safety while at school. So is, it is it okay to take my needs as a parent into account when making the decision? So I know parents uh, who tend to feel guilty and and I commend them because they're thinking in very conscious ways of wanting their best for their children, wanting to keep them safe all the time. Uh, the kids are better served oftentimes by being at school while the parents can then focus on uh, their work at hand and feel like they can get the best of their kids kind of after school and at the end of their work day in, in a better way than feeling like they're under the stress of wearing multiple hats always at the same time. Yeah, and Shamlin goes on to say there is some reassurance in the strengthening of a child's immune system that they get from being exposed to the other kids at school. So Heather, it kind of boils down to, you know, do you take care of the needs of your child, your own needs? The fact is a parent can't take full uh, care of their child if they haven't taken care of their own needs as well. I'm so glad that you brought up this point about other diseases and being exposed sure. because that it is so true you know if you even if you have a newborn or sending them to daycare or when your kids first enter school you know you're sick from october until march because they are exposed to so much yeah my mom and dad said you get healthy by going out and eating a little dirt right and you that's know? kind of what happens you know i have seen more and more on social media you know there are there are people who are uh very committed one way or the other right. but there is that smaller group now that's very confused about what to do. It's a hard decision to make. It is. All right. Thanks, Sean. An important conversation this morning.